Hi everyone, my name is Mathieu and welcome to the second part of these tutorials about making carbon fiber tubes and how to finish them. So the first part was about making the carbon fiber tubes. So we went through some pre-brick roll wrapping, we've used some split molds uh, using vacuum bags, then we also did some braided sleeves on top of a mandrel and filament winding as well. This tutorial will be about finishing the carbon fiber parts. So I'll be doing some uh, sanding and polishing of the carbon fiber, sanding, polishing the epoxy resin, and then I'll use some uh, 2K spray can clear and another clear with some green tinting pigment uh, out of spray again. So I'll take you through all the steps into this video. In case you missed the first part, make sure to check it out. It should pop up on the top right. So I'll go through every single technique into detail. Some are more easy than the other, um, but I just wanted to include everything so you get a good overview of what is possible to finish carbon fiber parts. So the first technique is sand and polishing carbon fiber. There's a big difference between sanding and polishing carbon fiber or sanding and polishing epoxy resin because here we'll be sanding into the fibers. So for this I've used the part that came out of the split mold. So this already had a good finish and a good outer finish. So first we start with sanding into the fiber we don't want to go too deep into the fibers or you get some mismatching of the weave. If at some point in this tutorial you think this is a cool tutorial, don't forget to leave a like just to support me. It helps me out. Uh, subscribe if you want to be notified about future tutorials as well. And make sure to check out my Instagram as well for future tutorials to come. I post daily about future projects that I'm making. So everything was sanded. So we started with a 240, then a 500 followed by an 800 and then a thousand, and then we can proceed to the polishing. So this is a rather forgiving technique because it's quite easy to do. The hardest part is not to sand into the fibers, but the higher you go in grit, the harder it would be to sand into the fibers. So the first sanding with the uh, 240 or 320 is the hardest part. Um, then for the polishing, I'm using a soft pad and a hard pad with different pie boats, um, polishing compounds and so we'll get like a metallic gloss of that carbon fiber giving some good refractions in the light. Um, so here is the, the finishing coat. So it only took about 10 or 15 minutes to sand the part. I already did a tutorial about this if you're interested in that. It's about 3D printed molds with uh, carbon fiber tubes coming out of these molds. A pop-up sh should come up on the top right if you want to see that video as well. So the second technique and um, will be like the, the base of the three following tubes that I'll be finishing is sand and polishing the epoxy resin. So we're not going into the fibers. Um, why is it so important to add some epoxy resin first? Like these three tubes were made by using some heat shrink tape and these will leave some marks onto the, onto the outer layer. So the inner layer, like the inside of the tubes will be perfect, uh, but the outside is a bit harder to finish. So here's an example, I'm just making a drawing. So we have our tube and then we added the heat shrink tape and this caused some wrinkles or some ev uneven compression of the tube. Uh, if you have like very expensive machines, it's very easy to apply the heat shrink tape in a general like good position every 0.5 millimeters for example giving better results but as some of these were done by hand it's harder to do as well for the roll wrapped tube we have a finish like a, a finishing layer so the last layer ended up somewhere in the diameter of the parts leaving like a little bevel where the last layer um, finished so that's why we'll be finishing all of these tubes with epoxy resin first so you can compare it with adding some bondo or filler on top and then sanding it flat again to get like a perfect finish before adding some clear um, but here we'll be using transparent bondo so in, in fact it's epoxy resin but this will enable us to remove a bit of epoxy at some points to get everything in a tube shape or a rounded shape so i'll be using the xcr epoxy resin 
So this is a special coating epoxy from Easy Composites. As you might have seen, it has a purple color and this is to prevent UV like attacking the resin or carbon fiber. Um, as far as I know, that's for the, the purple color. So it's, it's better, better resistant against UV and sunlight. So I'm using the X winder here because it's easier to apply the resin in an even way while the tubes are spinning. But you could also do this by just um, making your own jack and then moving it uh, now and then. I'll also show you this um, where I just apply it by hands on, on a fixture. So here's the result at, after the first layer. So we still have some like little marks from pinholes or scratches in the, in the tubes. And then the second layer is applied once the first coat is like firm but still tacky so it's like in a, a good chemical bond at this stage if you wait too long you can also sand it and then apply the second coat but here you can see as well how easy it is to apply it on a tube you just lift it up from the ground and then you move it now and then after the xcr is applied so here you can see me i've turned the parts uh, ones as well because i don't want to have all my brush strokes uh, going in one direction so that's why i've turned the part and here you can see how it looks like so while curing it takes about four hours uh, the first two hours i just move it around now and then to avoid drips on the uh, bottom of the tube um, the advantage of having them on the x winder or a jig with a motor is that it will just keep on spinning till it's fully cured so it will get better results on the x winder or a jig that it's turning um, the entire time while the resin is curing so here is the result of the three tubes now with epoxy so um, now we can finish it so i'll show you one example of um, sanding it on a lathe because this is like an easy way to do it. Uh, I've made a mount, it's in a previous video as well. You can see it on the top right. So I've 3D printed the mounting to go on late because I didn't find like the proper um, tool to mount these tubes on the late. And so I just decided to print them myself. I've used the Chidi or the Quidi printer, it's the X, uh, carbon fiber pro so it prints in pa carbon fiber so it's uh, nylon based if i'm correct and gives strong parts uh, if you want to see how i finished these mounts you can watch that other video so everything is mounted on the lathe right here so i'm just testing everything out first time i'm doing this so i <laughs> what i absolutely wanted to avoid is having the part flying around in the workshop even worse into my face so that's why i'm wearing like proper protection um, with a face shield and obviously using a mask because you'll get some fine fine dust particles uh, flying around as you can see here so i'm starting with a 320 i don't want to go too coarse because here we'll be polishing the epoxy resin so the worst thing that can happen here is sanding through that layer that we added um, and instead like polishing the carbon fiber like we did in the previous um, part. So I went up from 320 till 500. This is 1000 uh, dry and wet. So here, here's the, the wet stage. And then I just go over the part um, in an like even way and try to avoid having too many scratches. This is a good way to finish rounded parts. Uh, obviously if you're doing regular parts, you can just use your sander and a polisher, but this is the example on tubes, being able to use the lathe. Once we've finished using the 1000 grit, we'll use the pie boat uh, polishing compound. So first with a coarse pad, like the, the hard pad, followed by the soft pad and the more finishing polishing compound. So this is after the first compound so this is the the most aggressive one and then followed by the softer one so this will remove swirl mar marks from the first layer of polishing and then give you that high gloss finish that we are looking for so this is after the polishing of the softer compounds so we still have a bit of residue but once you remove it with the microfiber cloth, you'll get that high gloss that we are looking for. So you can see here, we have a perfect looking tube. 
high gloss, good finish. And this was done on the roll wrapped technique. So probably the, the easiest technique to make tubes and fish, finish them. Um, obviously you could also do this just by hand without using the lathe. So now for the 2K clear coat with a spray can. So the process was exactly the same as we did with the epoxy resin layer first to add like a layer of Bondo in theory, but it was epoxy resin. And then we can finish it with some clear coats. So you have the 1K on the left, then you have a 2K from Spraymax. So it has like an activator on the bottom. And then we can also use spray gun and 2K clears out of the cans. So I'll not, I will not feature the 1K clear because it's not that good. It's good for cosmetic parts. If you're making artworks and you just want to add a layer of clear, perfect. If you want to have parts that will be used, um, I wouldn't advise it as it will scratch quite easily. The 2K clears will be stronger and more resistant to chemicals and UV normally as well. So here is how it functions. So we first send it apart, then we have the button, a red button, and it has an activator on the bottom. So once you press it, it will open a capsule on the inside and make it possible for the two compo components to mix together in that spray can. From there on, you have about 14 hours. So it's quite a good amount of time to clear some parts. Uh, make sure you have your preparations first, and then you can just apply it. So it leaves like, um, it's a low pressure um, system. So it doesn't add like a lot of pressure like you would have with uh, the clear gun, um, but it's quite good, but it will leave an orange peel. Like in my opinion, it's good um, to start with. If you want to do like better paint jobs, it's better with the spray gun, but it's already pretty good to finish like small parts in your garage if you want to. So here's like the finish. So this is normally like the best finish you can get, like in automotive, uh, they will mostly use 2K out of the spray gun because it's more durable. It, it leaves you with better finishes. Um, and the process is exactly the same. So we added the epoxy resin, so if needed, normally if you have a part out of a mold that is already glossy, you don't need to add an extra layer of epoxy. Um, but then you first sand the parts to have a good mechanical grip because the paint needs to stick well onto your part. And then you use the 2K. So I'm using a 2K acrylic here. Um, I get this question a lot. What is the best clear coat? Um, to be honest, most of them will work. Go to your local spray shop. Normally they should be able to advise you. Um, I've tried different brands with mostly the same results. Mostly it will depend on your spray gun. So I'm using a 0 0.8 nozzle here. Uh, tint the clear down quite well, so it flows a bit better. And then it's more like user factor on how well you can spray parts. So I'm not saying I'm good at spray painting. If I have like important parts for customers, I go to a like a paint shop because it's their job, it's not my job. Um, but I can manage to do like small parts and, and get away with a pretty okay finish on my parts if it's not like that important. Um, if you want to to know like the, the proper way, I follow the gunman uh, on YouTube. I'll add his uh, channel on the top right or maybe here in the video. He's making a uh, good video, so it's quite entertaining entertaining to watch and um, I just like watching the videos and just trying and then uh, try to get the best results as possible. So I've added two layers of clear, then I've added some green tinting pigments to get that greenish uh, candy color on the carbon fiber and this is the result. So if needed you can also add some uh, metallic flakes into your paints. So these were added in the clear on top. So the layers would be two layers of clear coat, then you add some green pigment to your clear, uh, add two more layers and then finish with two layers of clear. If you want to, you can also add some metallic flakes into your paint. So here are the results of the four different finishes. I hope you liked this video, more videos are coming. Uh, I have some cool projects lined up, so don't forget to subscribe. Leave a like, let me know what finish you like. Did you like the green finish or is it a bit kitsch? Like, uh, a bit too much do you prefer the the clear carbon fiber or like the polished one uh, let me know and i'll see you guys in the next one thanks for watching